Hi guys, Chris here, and you are watching Here We Are Running. And today we are going to recap the Edinburgh Marathon 2019. Well, it's the 1st of June, uh, Saturday morning, and I'm on my run down to do the park run. This will be my first run back, having completed the Edinburgh Marathon last weekend. Now, this video is all going to be about a recap of that Edinburgh Marathon and I'll do that when I get back home. But if you haven't seen the actual race vlog, I'll put a link above and uh, yeah, check that one out first and then come back to this video. Okay, so I'm back home now and I will let you know how that first run back went at the end of this video. Before we get stuck into the recap, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who commented on my Edinburgh Marathon video offering your support for what happened. Um, it was truly overwhelming and I just want to say a massive thank you to you all. And to all the new subscribers, welcome to the channel and all those existing subscribers who came up and spoke to me during the race, it was great to have a bit of a chat whilst we were out there running. So now let's get stuck into the recap. And I will try and not waffle on too much about what happened, but you'll forgive me if this video is a bit of a long one because there is quite a lot to cover. I've divided what happened up into six phases. So let's get started with the first of those phases, which I've called the everything is going to plan phase. And this really lasted for the first 23 kilometers of the race. The first five miles of the race is all downhill to the coast. So I was um, making sure that I didn't run too fast during those uh, early miles, uh, trying to keep my legs as fresh as possible, and I did pretty good at that. And then all the way along the coast, up to about, as I say, 23 miles, I was sticking to my marathon pace goal, which was about five minutes, 19 per kilometer pace. We then moved into the, this is feeling harder than it should phase, and that was about five kilometers on, and leading up to the turnabout point. At that point we had the wind behind us and yet my pace was dropping slightly, not, not by too much, but obviously I was putting in probably less effort because the wind was behind and yet the pace was dropping. So yeah, it was starting to feel harder and there was some doubt setting into my mind at that point. As we went round the turnabout point, we hit the this is tough phase and we had the headwind straight into us and it really was starting to feel tough. And those doubts that were in my mind started to turn into how on earth are we going to run the next 14 kilometers back to the finish and i was starting to think if i can get to 30 kilometers before i start walking then that wouldn't actually be too bad but as we went into the grounds of the stately home we were away from the coast for a bit and i saw my watch hit 29 kilometers and i thought right i need a little bit of a walk now and that little bit of a walk turned into a bit of more of a longer walk really until we got back out onto the coast road. So back onto the coast road and we entered the I can't walk let alone run phase. So for the next four kilometers it was really a run walk type of situation and as we progressed the running became shorter and the walking became longer. It got to the point where even other people walking were overtaking me and the headwind was picking up as well at this stage. So I saw a stone wall about waist height at the side of the road and I decided I'd just sit there for a little bit and it was there where I started to notice I was getting cramping in my calf muscles. Um, there was a nearby marshal and he came over and asked if I was okay and I told him about the cramping and he, he offered to stretch it out which I gladly accepted. I also sat on the ground for a bit there and uh, just trying to stretch out the legs and I was probably stopped for about 10 minutes at that point. We then entered the first aid phase. So I struggled on until about 35 kilometers and at the side of the road, I saw a medical tent. I went in there, told them about the cramp. They massaged it, they put ice packs on it and I sat near a heater to try and warm up because uh, it was really cold there. And I was also sick whilst I was in there as well. Anyway, after about 20, 25 minutes, I felt well enough to go out again um, and got back to the kind of run walking phase that I was in before. I knew there was another medical tent a few miles down the road and when I got to that one I went in again 
Uh, I was, the cramp was bad again at that point. So they did kind of the full obs on me, the blood pressure, took a bit of blood, um, a pulse, temperature, all that sort of stuff. And I had a slight temperature for which they gave me ibuprofen and paracetamol. Um, also got me some electrolytes. Now I think it was the electrolytes that actually seemed to work quite well. Um, and really, a combination of all those things, and after 30 minutes stopped in that medical tent, I then left and made my way towards the finish. And this is where we entered the sprint finish phase. So when I left that final medical tent, I still had a couple of miles to go until the finish, and most of it, to be honest, was walking. But then when I hit the 26 mile marker, I thought, right, now I'm gonna run to the finish. And I did, and, I, and the running picked up and it turned into a sprint finish um, as we approached that finishing side. And I was <laughs> delighted to finish the race and uh, yeah, get it done and over with, to be honest. So that was it, I had finished my second marathon in five hours and 52 minutes, which was two hours slower than the first marathon. It took me three hours to do the final 12 kilometers of the race. And I was over an hour getting treatment in the medical centers. But to be honest, this turned out to be nothing about time, this race. This race was a battle of survival and getting to that finishing line. And I've got to be happy that I managed to do that because at one point, it certainly wasn't looking likely. So why did it turn out like that? Well, that's the big question. And to be honest, I haven't really got the answer to it. I thought I went, everything went well in training. Um, I did a long run in training, a 20 mile long run at marathon pace with the same hydration strategy that I used on race day. Didn't have any problems at all with that and felt I could have gone on from, from that point. And, you know, I didn't even get to 20 miles at this in, in the actual race itself before running into problems. I do think hydration was the main issue because when I got the electrolytes, I certainly seemed to improve and that kind of got me over the finishing line. But I had an electrolyte drink before the start. I was hydrating with water throughout and it wasn't a really hot day or anything. So why, why would I have been hydrated? Not, not sure. Um, what I will say is it's a marathon and pretty much anything can happen in a marathon. It's a different type of race altogether. The one thing I'll take away from this and that I probably will do differently when I do my next marathon is I think I am gonna take my own hydration with me. So I will take electrolyte drinks um, in a running pack uh, and yeah, it's gonna weigh a little bit more, but I think then at least I know that I'm drinking electrolytes as well as water um, during the actual race itself. So that's the recap, but what about my first run back? So I did a three kilometer run down to the park run. That was all fine, legs felt fresh. Um, waited for a few minutes before the actual park run started. And then in the first 100, 200 meters, I pulled up with pain in my left calf, which again I thought was cramp. I'm not so sure now. It's, um, the pain hasn't gone away. Uh, so it's been with me for a few hours now. So not, not a happy ending to this video again. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm not sure what's happened there. I'm gonna just have to rest it now and see um, whether it was cramp again or whether it's something more than that um, and whether it recovers quickly or not. But as I say, it's been a few hours since I did that and I've still got some pain in that left calf. So on that not so happy note, if you've made it through to the end of this video and you did find it interesting, then please do give the video a like. And if you're new to the channel, um, I promise that most of my videos do have a happier ending than this. Um, but if you're new to the channel, uh, then why not consider subscribing for regular running content. But that's it for now guys, goodbye.